so this is following on from part one but this time it's it's about what I'm going to be doing in my DIY power wall um, so I'm going to be using a grid tie inverter uh, it's going to be um, a two kilowatt or two thousand watt grid tie inverter with limiter um, what it's um, the reason I'm going to ch uh, the reason I've chosen to um, use a grid tie inverter is one with when compared to an off grid inverter with an off grid inverter you've pretty much got to run either the whole house or particular or particular circuits in the house um, off the inverter you can't be running both at the same time it's either you're either on grid or you're off grid and you're either on grid and some circuits are off grid or it's kind of one or the other um, which means a couple of problems it means first um, electrician costs two you've got to choose choose which circuits you want to be um, to run off your inverter which obviously then runs off your DIY power wall um, or whatever other battery bank you've got um, and there's lots of other um, ex um, extended costs involved in um, using an off-grid inverter however using a, um, a grid tie inverter there's none of that um, all you need to do for for any grid tie inverter that's less than 2000 watts um, you pretty much just plug it into an AC outlet it's really that simple um, there's tons of people on YouTube if you just watch uh, YouTube and look at um, the Sun 500 um, you'll see people with six or seven of those um, all just connected up and wired in and they're nice and simple to use so what, I, what I'm meaning by that is that um, if you've got a grid tie inverter that's under 2000 watts that can just it, you can just plug it in to uh, a normal AC outlet um, just like anything else because your AC outlets normally have a, a limit of 2400 watts so there's no problems about plugging a 2000 watt um, inverter in there and the the other advantages is that the um, not only is it one circuit it's all your house instantly um, um, benefits from using the grid time inverter so let's just say you have a 500 watt grid time inverter and you plug that in um, the whole house is going to benefit um, from the the 500 watts of of extra power you're pulling from your battery bank um, so just very quickly and very simplistically how does a grid time inverter work well um, the simplest way and the easiest way to look at it and the way I think about it is that if the grid in New Zealand it's 240 volts that comes into your house so the grid is 250, uh, 240 volts the house is 240 volts normally as well if you plug a grid time inverter in the house voltage increases let's just say it's 241 volts just the way electricity works the 251 volts or 241 volts gets used first um, it's kind of the simplest way to look at it so for example if you put if your house is using one kilowatt and you plug a 500 watt grid tie inverter in the grid tie inverter will put out its maximum 500 watts your house will use or any loads in the house, so your lights and your bits and pieces, will use the 500 watts first, and then it'll use the power from the grid as a as a secondary. Um, it, it happens automatically. It's just you plug one thing in, and that becomes the the high point, and it the parts of the house or the house feeds off that, and obviously it can't. It, it's got a kilowatt, so it, you, you're using a kilowatt, so um, the rest will come from the grid. So grid tie inverters are so simple to use. Um, when you start getting into the bigger ones, like the three kilowatt, the four kilowatt, and the five kilowatt, etc., then you obviously need an electrician to plug them uh, to wire them into your switchboard. The reason for that is because it's just a lot more current and a lot more current that your normal AC outlet can't provide. So you've got two options. One, you buy a couple of 500 watts or 1,000 watts or 2,000 watt grid tie inverters, or you buy one big grid time inverter um, like I have with just my normal solar setup but now the advantage with um, a grid another obviously advantage with the grid time inverter and as I mentioned just quickly before is that you don't need to um, have special outlets that are um, dedicated for um, to, for your Tesla power wall power from the batteries it's it's whatever your uh, grid time inverter will produce 
will be what the house uses and um, the rest of it will just come from the grid so it's nice and simple um, so if you're just looking at this project and you're just looking at um, getting into making yourself a little battery system or a big battery system like the DIY Powerwall um, what you can easily do is just buy a grid time inverter just buy one just to get started um, it doesn't need to be a massive one um, just get a thousand watt grid time inverter you can plug it in plug that the other end of it into your batteries and away you go now the the way the one key thing to remember as I said earlier in the uh, earlier in the videos is that um, you need to have some kind of limiter on it because otherwise the grid tone inverter is just going to use as much power out of the batteries as possible to meet the requirements of the 500 watt grid time inverter for example it will draw 500 watts from the batteries um, so you need to have a limiter and um, there's a couple of brands that, that support the limiters and it's pretty much an off the shelf product you can buy a 1000 watt grid time inverter with limiter and just quickly um, what, what does the limiter do? well the limiter monitors how much power the house is using or how much you're consuming in the house and it only allows that much power to come out of your batteries or another way to look at it is that if the house is using 2000 watts or sorry if your house is using 500 watts and your inverter is 1000 watts then it's only going to let a 500 watts come out of your inverter so that way you're not wasting power because if you did it without the inverter or sorry without the limiter then what will happen is that you obviously send power back to the grid and um, if it's battery power then it's very it's it's you know valuable so you don't really want to be sending that off to the grid you really want to be using that yourself within your house so the best thing to do is obviously get one with a limiter and that's something that um, is off the shelf pretty much um, and you can order that online so that's that's really what I've done so I've purchased a 2000 watt grid time inverter um, with limiter and the voltage range on that is 60 volts to 90 volts and what that means is that my battery bank has to be 60 volts to 90 volts um, and uh, what I'll do is I'll talk about that a little bit more in the next video about how I'm going to do my packs and how I'm going to achieve that voltage but um, none of well no one else really at this point um, creating a DIY power walls have thought about or are using grid time inverters so I'm sure many of you are going to be very interested to see how this project comes along and how it, how it goes um, it's um, it's quite simple in the respects that um, yes create a battery bank um, connect it up to a grid time inverter with a limiter and away you go but there's other challenges like um, how do you charge it um, because as I just mentioned the voltage is 60 volts to 90 volts so um, the charges are going to be different um, I can't just use an off-the-shelf product um, I can't exactly use the um, for example it's not going to be a 48 volt system it's not going to be a 24 volt system it's going to be a much higher voltage um, in fact it's going to be 74 volts nominal so it creates a, a whole raft of other issues um, about um, around, mainly around the charging um, because most chargers or most solar charger controllers um, support 30 amps or 60 amps but at 24 volts or 48 volts um, there's not and it's really designed for lead acid batteries there's not many um, lithium ion chargers um, that are solar charge controllers that are that, that support lithium ion and especially within the voltage range that I want um, which is more the upper limits of the, or the, the upper scale of the voltage range so um, I'll cover that really in the next video um, but it's going to be interesting um, it's going to be a good project um, but I'm doing things obviously slightly different to how other people are doing it um, and just in the regards of the um, the inverter um, but yeah it's it should be good it should be fun and I'll see you guys in the next video great thanks